Hi, welcome and welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today, I want to talk to you about 10 ways to identify a con artist or scammer. And this relates to the series that I just finished on narcissists and money. And as I've said before, anyone who is willing to or actively tricks, cons, manipulates, or scams you out of your money, or even your time, attention, resources, is definitely narcissistic. So I thought of 10 ways that you can identify this type of behavior and these types of individuals. Number one, they won't reveal to you their government name. They may pop an initial in the front, maybe go by a first initial and a middle name, or maybe go by their middle name and last name. You know, the alleged murderer did that. And this is, of course, an effort to make it a little bit more difficult for you to determine who they are or to research them or find out information about them. Number two, they may approach you with an opportunity. It may be a deal or a hook of some kind or some kind of crisis maybe or situation that requires your uh, immediate attention. Three, they may approach you with a high salesy approach and there's an urgent need for you to respond as quickly as possible. It's urgent, it's critical, uh, it's an emergency. You have to act fast, act now. Number four, they may blow you away with all of the things that you have in common with them. Oh my gosh, we both operate in the same realm or we both like the same things or we both uh, come from the same area or have the same background or we both like this or that or we're both on this mission and they may try to make a connection with you in that way to draw you in and lock you in very quickly and also doesn't that just engage you emotionally to know that you have something in common with someone or that there's a connection or that they maybe come across as like-minded. Number five, they will study you and then morph into the role of your soulmate, of your ideal colleague or business partner, or some kind of other answered prayer, some kind of uh, helper or savior or whatever the case may be. And if you have a blog or a website or social media, any kind of online presence that's easily uh, researchable, then just know that this type of individual is going to be looking in the about you. They're going to be reading your blog post to find out what your interests are, find out a little bit about, about your background, what's important to you, what your mission is in life, and what kind of things you, you like what kind of hobbies you have and use that again to make a connection and to really speak to you directly. Number six, they may be volatile emotionally and they may be happy as long as you and other sources of supply are falling in line with what they want, supplying them with what they need, if it's money, time, attention, what have you. But then they may suddenly swing to extreme anger or frustration and express to you like, oh, I'm so mad at her. Or, oh, you know, I just, I don't, I don't like her. She, I, I'm mad at her. She made me mad or she did this and shift some blame over to someone who's maybe not falling in line with what they want, with what their expectations are in terms of getting their needs met. Something to look out for. Number seven, they may be cryptic or secretive or vague, especially when it comes to revealing information or details about themselves in terms of who they are or, you know, what their background is. Or maybe if you're trying to, you know, find out more information to validate, you know, who and what you're dealing with, there's going to be a, a secretiveness, a crypti cryptic nature to the conversation. Or they may even flat out tell you, like, oh, I can't tell you that, and kind of play this mystery person. Number eight, nothing comes to fruition. They may talk about doing things with you or creating things with you or working with you in some kind of fashion, cross-functionally or collaboratively, 
and or they may promise you things and nothing comes to fruition. I had a conversation recently with a friend of mine and we had both been dealing with a grandiose female narcissist and I, the, the other person had been dealing with this narcissist professionally and I asked her, I said, you know, what, what tipped you off about her? Like what really made you realize that you needed to cut ties with her? She said, you know, she talked a good game and talked about all this stuff and nothing ever happened, nothing ever came to pass. I was like, all right, I, I see that too. And we both could relate to the same experience, different circumstances, but we both could relate to that. Nothing came to fruition. And that ties in with future faking, which I've talked about in other videos. Number nine, the person may give off bad vibes. Just in interacting with them or having a conversation, you just may notice things just energetically in the way that you feel around them. They may make you feel uncomfortable. They may come across as kind of awkward or just shifty or shady. And you may even talk to someone later who maybe has interacted with the same individual and might actually share with you, hey, you know, I met this person before, or I've had a conversation with them before, and I got a bad vibe from them, and I just kind of walked the other way, and just didn't even bother to, to deal with them. And number 10, you'll want to look for signs of addiction. Some narcissists may con, scam, manipulate, steal, what have you, to fund their party lifestyle. They may spend their days drinking, drugging, engaging in reckless sex, and they expect you to foot the bill for that. So you'll want to really look for signs of substance abuse, maybe a shiftiness or being fidgety or nervous or, or paranoia, maybe track marks or meth mouth, well, you know, where the teeth are rotting or corroded. And uh, you may want to look for things like uh, just skin lesions, maybe from picking or, or, or scratching or things like that. So those are some things that you'll want to look out for as well. So those are 10 things to look for to identify a con artist or scammer. And again, anyone who is willing to con, scam, trick, steal, manipulate you out of your money, time, and attention and other resources is definitely narcissistic. So these are 10 things that you can look out for and use as a litmus test to help you to determine who and what you're dealing with and make a decision as to whether or not you want to engage with that person. You're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.